Good morning. Welcome to Courageous Conversations. I'm so happy to be here. I uh, wanted to talk about a tough subject and first thing I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, sharing so that you can all be on the journey with me. Uh, Courageous Conversations is uh, both a group and a page and I would love you to join my group where we all share our <sighs> courageous thoughts, acts, and also our, you know, our, our decisions as well, our courageous decisions and our conversations as well with ourselves and others. So join me and also the page is there to really highlight all the stuff that, um, that I'm doing here on Courageous Conversations. So <clears throat> I just want to welcome you as you come on. Let me know you're here and let me know that you are uh, on the journey with me. I want to talk about grief, grieving. Um, bereavement. Uh, I want to talk about loss, disappointment. Um, these are bound to happen in our life at one time or another. And by the way, grieving doesn't just apply to people that have died or, or relationships that have broken up. You can be grieving the loss of a dream, the loss of a way of being, the loss of a, the loss of a house that you, that you, that you cherished and loved. It can, you know, grieving can apply to so many different things, but no matter how serious the loss is or less serious the loss is, we as humans need to go through that process and we need to go through it in a way that is um, constructive and not at all structured. Sometimes it's extremely unstructured. Sometimes it's just extremely messy, extremely you know, all over the place. It, 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 it can be, it can be very, very, very torturous. Uh, if, if people, if you resist it, you know, the resistment, the resisting of it is, um, is not recommended at all. I, I, I talk to people about grieving all the time, uh, in my office. And a lot of the theme is, I thought I was done with that. You know, for, for example, I thought I was done with that thing, but the, the, the reality about grieving um, is that it comes in waves and it can last, you know, years. Um, and that's okay. That's okay. We need to be courageous enough to experience the true, the true essence of the bereavement process, the grieving process, the loss process. If you don't surrender to it, you're, you're going to have unresolved grief, you know, unresolved grief. I, le I recently watched the movie uh, A Star is Born with Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. And I would say that that movie is a, a testament to unresolved grieving. Um, and I won't give away the ending and I won't, but I just know that the character, the main character, uh, Jackson, um, who's the, the guy played by Bradley Cooper, he is a, he is a pool, a mountain of unresolved grief. And the results are tough because he doesn't confront his pain. He, his pain is simply ruling his, ex, his existence at every turn. And I believe that that's what unresolved grief will do. Um, if we don't respect the grief, if we don't go through the grief, if we don't go through the mountain, there's no way around the mountain. The mountain has to be part of the journey. Understanding that there is, you know, some, some hard work ahead of you. Um, and you got to get out of denial, you know, got to get out of denial and get into, you know, the, the realities of the human condition, which is nothing lasts forever. And we are bound to feel profound sorrow and profound grief and profound, you know, disappointment for what we hoped for, for the dream that we had. Uh, hi, Lynn Ann. I hope, how you doing, sweetheart? You've been, you've been in a journey. How you doing? Um, you know, and everyone else who's joining me, thank you so much for joining me. Let me know you're here. Give me a little note that you're here joining me on the journey as we talk about this profound subject of grief and loss and disappointment and how to go through it. And frankly, we're all going to be going through grief at some point, at one point or another. And damn it, let's all do it in a way that is productive and also in a way that is flowing. And when I, when I say, and hi, Andrew, hi, Andy, nice to see you. Um, when I say that there's this journey, 
of grieving. I posted a picture on my timeline, which I don't know who, who created this picture. I'd love the author of the picture to let me know. It's called The Whirlpool of Grief. And it's basically a description of the river of life. And when, when, when you go down, you know, the, uh, um, the waterfall, you know, whoa, that's the loss, the something. And that's when shock starts with shock and numbness. I love this description. Denial. It's not happening. It didn't happen. You know, it's, it, you know, it's this denial pl place that we go into. It's shock. Um, and, and, and. Keebler Ross talks about Dabda, denial, anger, blame, bargain, depression, and acceptance. Wow, I can't believe that I actually remember that, <laughs> the whole thing. Um, but, you know, the truth of the matter is, is initially there's going to be a sense of shock. But eventually, eventually, um, hi Mandy, hi everybody that's joining us. Eventually, as that shock starts to wear off, as the nervous system starts to adapt to the fact that there's this massive loss going on, whether it be a death, whether it be the death of a relationship, whether it be the loss of a dream, something you've worked really hard for and then it doesn't come to fruition, whether it be, um, you know, uh, you have to move for some reason, whether it be, you know, profound disappointment in someone, you know, a shock as to someone has behaved in ways that you can't even imagine, you know, you can't even imagine, um, you know, us as humans, we are, we are bound to experience disappointment, but we've got, there's, a, there's, there's some good ways to do it and there's some clearly not very healthy ways to do it. And numbing it out is the first step, but then what people get lost in often is keeping the numbed out feeling going through addictions and, you know, and, and masking the true feelings. I mean, I, I, I work with someone just to, to give you an idea that, and this is the, the, the kind of thing that I'm talking about in the movie, uh, A Star is Born, um, that, that that only 20 years after the event started to begin the grieving process. And then you got to go through it no matter how you slice it or dice it. Um, and there's, when you really allow the, the grieving process to, to be healthy, you're in it. You're in the muck and the mire for a bit. You're in that, that place of, um, life becomes disorganized. Life becomes sort of a, the shock turns into, the new understanding of life and then the new understanding of life becomes this incredibly painful, you know, profound, you know, can be tears, can be anxiety, can be anger, a lot of anger for people. But anger, you know, is not a primary emotion. It's actually just a, a secondary emotion. Uh, and a lot of anger comes from fear and from hurt. And that just pushes the anger forward. And so the truth of the matter is, is, is that when people are going through the various waves, and I really want to talk about the waves of the grief process, understand that there is, you know, um, many emotions that, 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 that don't, don't stick to them. I've seen people behave in the weirdest, craziest, you know, most uncharacteristic ways because they're grieving. And so grieving can, hi, Hanya, nice to see you. Hanya's going to be here tomorrow talking about some really, really amazing things. She created Hanya's Hope, but tomorrow we will talk about that. But today we're talking about grieving. But the truth, and I can't wait to see you, Hanya. The truth of the matter is, is that, you know, that don't get, st I want to encourage people to, like I tell people in the office and I'm telling you now, treat the feelings that are showing up as you're grieving and tell yourself, I'm feeling this feeling so that it can be released so I can go to the next phase. It's you want to literally just be in it and just tell yourself, let me feel this fully. Let me feel this fully so that it will pass through my system and imagine your system like a screen door so that you're not hooking into the feelings. Don't just don't just hook into the feelings. Allow yourself the 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 beautiful experience I know I'm calling it beautiful and you guys are probably scoffing at me and I've been through massive grief. So I know what I'm talking about, but it is when you look back a beautiful experience, it's a privilege to live life in such a rich way when you grieve deeply. Uh, Lynn Ann Hill, um, uh, who, who was just running for, for counselor in her, in her area. It's been a journey. I'm doing great. Thanks. So much has happened in the past six weeks. Welcoming, welcoming my first grandbaby. Congratulations. Running an election. Congratulations. Losing my brother to cancer. I'm so sorry. Losing the election. Fuck. Excuse my language. <laughs> I have allowed myself to feel all the feelings. 
um, and embrace support from friends through it all. Allowing myself to authentically experience happiness and sorrow has made it also profoundly beautiful. I have tears in my eyes as I'm reading that, Lin-Ann. Lin -Ann. I know the universe has, uh, has uh, supported me throughout it all. And to be frank, I'm relieved the election is over. Good. And uh, I can do the work without the council spot. It's how I roll. Good job. Good work. That Talk about transforming. But you might experience some grieving about the you know all this effort and then the loss of the dream, maybe. Or not. But obviously you have your brother that you're grieving. But I feel that the, the truth of the matter is to, to have it not kill you. You know, uh, grieving that's unresolved can kill. Okay? Because people get involved uh, in the denial of grief. Um, uh, Hanya says, allowing yourself to grieve, it's so important. Allowing to feel and move through it. Exactly. When you don't allow yourself to feel and move through it, that's the stuff that can kill you. Uh, that's the stuff that makes people just become blocked in denial, uh, either emotionally, uh, and they're blocking it through, you know, addictions or even just addictive behavior, um, or staying stuck in anger. That's a huge one, by the way, when you don't let the, when you don't let the, the waves come through and pass through you, many people get stuck in the anger, the, why the hell did that happen? You know, and all that. So I just want to tell you that, um, the journey of grieving, it's a human experience. So as humans, I believe it is our duty as human beings to do it well. And the only, when I say do it well, there's not one prescription about doing it well. It's the truth that it's a flow. Doing it well means just get in the flow of the feelings. Don't allow the feelings to get stuck at any one phase. And each phase will take as long as it's going to take. The truth of the matter is, is denial may take quite a while. Um, uh, anger will take a while, but you don't get stuck there. I like people to move through anger, just get past the anger into the blame and into the bargaining and into the depression. The depression is certainly one of the more dangerous ones. But again, allow that depression to be there. Get some therapy, go into some grief counseling, take some supplements. Maybe you need to take an antidepressant to help you through it. It's not about stopping it. It's not about blocking it. It's about not having it kill you in the process. And then you finally get to a place of acceptance. When my father died in 1989, I thought, I told my therapist at the time, I said, I feel like the captain of my plane <laughs> has, 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 has gone. And, uh, and, and my father was no easy person, let me tell you, but he was so powerful in my life that he was like the captain. Everything I experienced was like, what's my father going to think? And so when he died, when I was 24 years old, I mean, that's a really young age to lose your dad. I was like, I feel like the captain of my life, of my plane, of my boat, of the rudder of my boat is gone and I am suddenly being thrown into the deep end and I'm being told you, you got to fly your own plane. And I remember that, that, I mean, let me tell you, I'm many, many years since that and the various waves of grief still come on. I still feel grieving waves. And, and, you know, I'll, I'll think about, I'll think about times with my father and that will come that though, that grieving tears will come or a song. Or if I listen to Edith Piaf, who my father used to love, I will feel, you know, very sad. And, and so it doesn't matter how long the waves will come, but don't fight them. Be in the wave. People say in my office, when's this going to stop? I'm like, I don't know. It'll stop when you stop fighting it. Probably it, it'll, you have to go through it. There's no way around the mountain, as I say often and troubleshoot the self, as I say often, don't let it just sit, uh, you know, work on it, find out what's really going on. Why, why are you in denial of it? Or why are you blocking it? Or why is, you know, or, or ask yourself the questions, what's this all about? Why am I, you know, um, not allowing the grieving process. I'm a, many people will say, cause I'm afraid of, of pain because I'm afraid of pain. Well, I want to, to remind you that life has as the richness of life involves pain. The richness of life involves pain and the muscles you develop from being able to work with the pain so that you're not just, um, you know, denying it, blocking it, and then, uh, uh destroying yourself through it. So life, you know, we need courage to go through pain. And the truth of the matter is, is grieving is one of the best, um, most profound, expanding, eye-opening, uh, muscle-producing, um, learning journeys in life. 
when we lose something or someone and then we have the courage to go through that pain, I'm telling you that is the most expanding aspect of you and you will and you will grow the most if you have the courage to truly troubleshoot that truly truly troubleshoot it and truly truly be with it that is um what what will occur and the truth of the matter is 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 that if you enter into that falling apart or that 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 you know emotional effed upness and confusion without panicking without panicking um, you're at, you allow yourself to mourn deeply. You are going to get into a place where your whole being will come together again and you will come into an acceptance once again. Uh, one of the most powerful books that I read that helped me cope with death. Um, I lost a good friend. I lost my father. I've lost another few uh, very close people to me over the years. Um, I couldn't have kids. That was a huge grieving please pace for thing for me. So there were many things that I personally had to go through, but that make me really have compassion and empathy for anyone having to go through hell of loss and grieving. Um, a great book uh, that I recommend profoundly is called Journey of Souls by Michael Newton. Um, that really helped me to contextualize life and to understand what the hell life is all about. What are we here for. Now, I don't know if it resonates with everyone, but check it out. Journey of Souls. Um, it helped me go through my father's death. It's helped me go through um, a variety of things in my life. And I, I, I invite you to consider it because I think it could be of, of use to you, maybe, if, if that resonates with you. Um, and also, the other piece that's so important in all of this is there's this thought that people say, and I used to say it, is that this is the way life should go. Why isn't it going this way? Or I did all my affirmations and my visualizations and why is it not happening the way I want it to happen? And, and then there's this profound disappointment. I have to say that part of going through life is this dual process of focus and visualization and letting go. You can't just go through focus and visualization and not consider the notion that there are aspects in the universe that you cannot control. All you can control is your thinking, but the truth is, the truth of the matter is, is there's a lot that you can't control. So don't get obsessed with what you can't control. Get interested deeply with curiosity what you can control. Because when you're going through life's disappointments, it's not a punishment. It's just I believe it's there for our growth, for our for our transformation, even though that's very, very, very hard to to hear. Um, Lynn Ann says, Ima imagining my brothers joining my father has given me some peace. Yeah, I mean, these are important. These are important uh, types of things to think about. I believe that's probably exactly what's happened. Lynn Ann, um, I believe that the soul doesn't die. I believe that we live on. I believe that our body basically dies, but our soul continues. Uh, I, I really feel that that's, that's, and, and I don't just feel it. I, uh, journey of souls helped me because it's, it was a, it's an over 25 year study that, that, um, that, uh, Michael Newton puts together in journey of souls about the fact that, you know, we do live on as souls and we're here to learn and grow and to decide what our journey will be. And there's going to be a ton of disappointment, not just to punt. Not to punish us. Not. It's not about just. There is no punishment. It's not about punishment. It's about growth. It's about learning. It's about evolving. And I did a video the other week or two. Evolve or repeat. So evolve, learn, take the experiences of life and learn from them. And death, loss, grief, disappointment is part of that learning. And don't get stuck in the anger. Don't get stuck. Don't get stuck in the anger. Don't get stuck in the bitterness. That's where people just sit there. And A Star is Born, brilliant movie, is all about getting stuck in, in, in unresolved grieving. And Dana Castro says, I saw you at the shift event on Sunday. Uh, I, uh, I, I was like, where do you know her from? Realize now we are Facebook friends. Yes, Dana, I, I, um, I love the shift event. It was wonderful. It was great. I'm, I, you know, wish I'd seen you, but I'm glad to see you here. And that's beautiful that you are here. And the shift event was great, wasn't it? Lots of great speakers. 
Um, I might speak at one of them at, at some point in the future. So the truth of the matter is, is that the grieving process and disappointment will be part of your life. And the journey to do it, to have it not kill you, is to not get stuck in any one of the waves that show up. And understand that the waves will be, will be, will be, well, will be much, they will be big probably, and sometimes small, and sometimes extremely painful, oft times very, very painful. And also, don't isolate. Can I just say, everybody say that to themselves, don't isolate. If you're going through something, reach out. Ask for help. Don't isolate. It is, I believe that people who isolate get stuck in the steps, in the various levels and stages, more, uh, they're more likely to get stuck in depression or get stuck in anger or get stuck in embitterment or get stuck, stuck in confusion or get stuck in denial. Reach out. Talk to someone. Ask for help. Ask for someone to take you, uh, even just go for coffee or go to a therapist or reach out. Reach out, please. Okay? So, I hope this is helpful. I want everyone to know that my heart is with you that as you're going through tough stuff. I've gone through some tough stuff. You are probably have gone through some tough stuff or going through it right now. You know, I can feel the angelic presences in the room. I get the itchy nose. <laughs> um, I want you to know that you're not alone. And I want you to know that you are absolutely precious and valuable and you must not isolate. People are out there for you. I have infinite compassion for any one of us going through the shit of life. And I want you to know you're going to grow and it, life is not here to punish. Life is here to have us evolve or repeat. So please, for goodness sake, evolve, evolve, evolve past the pain, evolve through the pain, not past the pain, through the pain. Nick's past through the pain. There's no way around the mountain. Okay. So I want you to keep having courageous conversations with yourself and others. Uh, visit my page, Courageous Conversations, and do a little like. Also, join my group, Courageous Conversations, where I have more conversations with you uh, that are that are sort of for you. And also, um, join me tomorrow for uh, a really another special Courageous Conversation with Hanya Kismchuk. All right, who is of Hanya's hope? And uh, she's just a spectacular being. So let's uh, let's let's all get there tomorrow. But today. Be kind to yourself, have a courageous conversation with yourself and with others, and understand that you matter, you're valuable, and I'm thinking about you. Take care. Bye for now.